question on these expanded powers going to Ontario pharmacists. We're joined live by Justin Bates, the CEO of the Ontario Pharmacists Association. Justin, good morning. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. So let's talk about, from the pharmacist's perspective, the benefits of this new program. Well, not new, an expanded program announced today by Health Minister Sylvia Jones. What do you see? Yeah, very similar to what uh, you just played in the clip with uh, Minister Jones talking about how this has been uh, well received by the public. Uh, since January 1st, we've had over 400,000 uh, assessments done of the, thir the original 13 uh, minor ailments. And it just makes sense to continue to build momentum around this program because Ontario is playing catch up compared to other provinces. And we want to make sure that we're adding capacity to the healthcare system, avoiding emergency department visits. And we're working as a team. It's really a team-based care model to ensure that uh, we're working with physicians and public health and all of these things so that uh, patients have greater access and can leverage pharmacies as a community health care hub. And that's really important, the leverage, considering especially how many hundreds of thousands of Ontarians don't have access to a family doctor. So how does this help streamline the process for, for people who find themselves in that position, Justin? Yeah, and I think there's a multi-prong approach here. We definitely need more family physicians and we need investments across the healthcare system. But certainly by leveraging the expertise of pharmacists, they have the education and training to be able to do this. It, what it will do is create more options for patients. And these are low acuity or common ailments. Um, and uh, we've seen in other provinces how this can be done safely and effectively uh, with really no risk to, uh, to the public. So this is all about you know, leveraging that uh, you know, footprint that we have, almost 5,000 uh, community health care hubs in every community, rural, remote, and urban. But it's also about making sure that we're working in a collaborative model with physicians, because we're not taking away from one to give to the other. We're trying to ensure that we have enough capacity with health care providers to meet the needs of Ontario patients today and into the future. Can you talk about some of the expertise of pharmacists? I mean, certainly they are medical professionals. There is a high level of education that goes into this uh, to be able to be a pharmacist in Ontario. So when it comes to the patient trust and some patients walk in and saying, are you sure you're qualified to be prescribing me these medications? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, we've seen it in other provinces where the education is the same. So the pharmacy schools and the curriculum are teaching prescribing authority and have for a long time. And we're just catching up the regulations for the scope of practice for pharmacists to be able to actually practice the way that they have learned. Um, and this is a, an evolution, certainly, uh, as we've seen additional scope uh, across a number of areas, including immunizations and vaccines. And we saw that uh, on display uh, with the COVID vaccines and flu shots and travel vaccines through both uh, before the pandemic and, and during the pandemic. And we're getting into things like point of care testing to be able to help manage a patient's journey through acute and also chronic conditions. And really, it's all about um, all healthcare professionals have this degree of expertise. We're not trying to be anything more than what we've been trained for. We're not getting into diagnosis or things where it's traditionally the uh, you know the realm of physicians. It's really about tapping into the capacity of pharmacists to be able to do things that they can deliver for patients because they do have a very trusted relationship, are highly accessible. Uh, patients, uh, you know, work with their pharmacist as largely a, uh, a center point to be able to help navigate through a lot of the parts of the healthcare system. The thirst of appetite like the, the population has for credible health information that they can walk in or make an appointment at a pharmacist is so incredible. And we saw that during the, the pandemic. For sure. And thank you for that really thorough answer as well, Justin. When it comes to the uh, pharmacies that are not participating, we heard from the health minister today out of the 5,000 pharmacies, community hubs across the province, 89% are in locked into this program. When you talk about the other 11%, what do you think the hesitation is for some of these pharmacists to hold back to say, yeah, I'm not really there yet where I want to be prescribing these uh, minor ailments? Yeah, I think a lot of it is driven by their patient population. So depending on where they practice and the location of their pharmacy, 
um, they may or may not have demand for these types of services. So I think that's the first consideration. And also, you know, organizations all need to look at their uh, workplace um, arrangements, uh, how they operationalize and implement the services, everything from um, the human resources component to make sure that we have uh, you know, ample and adequate staffing for both pharmacy technicians and pharmacists. Um, but largely, it's mostly due to demand. And I think you're going to see as we have since January, more and more pharmacies continue to contribute and step up. Uh, and eventually, I, I expect that will be 100 percent. Pharmacists play an important role in our healthcare system and just in everyday society. Often you see your pharmacist more than you do your family doctor. Justin Bates, the CEO of the Ontario Pharmacists Association, thanks for being here and for this conversation. My pleasure. Thank you.